Welcome to a video on the gain bandwidth product of operational amplifier. So we are going to look at what is the gain bandwidth product, how do we calculate the gain bandwidth product, what applications does it have and lastly we will look in some simulations. Now op amps is non-ideal devices. So in the beginning, we said that the bandwidth of the op amp is infinite. This was to make our life easy when doing derivations. Now the bandwidth is not infinite. Okay, so an op amp has its maximum bandwidth when it's configured in a buffer. So when the gain is 1 volt per volt or at 0 decibels. This is also called the unity gain of amplifier. Unity meaning 1. So when the gain is 1, we find our maximum bandwidth. Okay, so if you need to find the unity gain of amplifier, you connect it as a buffer and you go and look for the minus 3 dB point. Okay. Most data sheets does not take the minus 3 dB point for this, but rather the point before the gain starts to drop. So it's sometimes a bit fuzzy. Um, okay, and simulations also act different than real life situations because it's based of average components. So, the op amp at unity gain starts to act like a low pass filter. Every semiconductor element inside the op amp has parasitic capacitive effects. Okay, and all these capacitors tries to let the output cut off. So, what does the unity gain mean for us? If we increase the gain of amplifier, the bandwidth will decrease, and this is a linear process. So we can predict what the gain or the, uh, the bandwidth will be at certain gains. So in my examples, I'm going to use the OP77 and the AD744. And here is one of the outputs. As you'll see here at zero decibels, our unity gain, you can go up here until about just 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. The data sheet op 77 says 600 megahertz. So they take it around there and the minus 3 dB point is around here somewhere okay so this is the unity gain and every time the gain is increased the bandwidth decreases so every time looking for that minus 3 db point and you can see that there is a, a linear characteristic about this Um, so, if we go and have a look at the data sheets for the AD744 and the OP77, you'll find a bandwidth of between 400 and 600 kilohertz for OP77 and a 13 megahertz bandwidth for the AD744. So, if we want to do some calculations with this, these are the 0 dB uh, bandwidths. So if you want to find the closed loop bandwidth, we take the unity gain and divide it by the closed loop gain. So our resistor ratios. And we can find for each one the bandwidth so for at zero dBs the one that we got from the data sheet 
at a gain of 20 decibels or 10 volts per volts it will decrease to 60 kilohertz and 1.3 megahertz so basically this divided by 10 divided by 10 again divided by 10 again okay so this is kind of a linear um, progression in the db scale and we can find or predict the bandwidth of our op amp with feedback attached now the use of all of this is if you need to maintain a high bandwidth and have a maximum gain or a higher gain you can break up the gain between different amplifiers and cascade the amplifiers so let's go and check out all of this in some simulations so the first simulation here I set up for OP77 so I set up this first amplifier here for multiple gains, gain of 10, gain as a buffer, gain of 100, gain of 1000 here we have one just of a gain of 1000 and lastly I split up the gain of 1000 into three different amplifiers so let's run this simulation and see what it gives us. Right, so if we take the variable one here, uh, let's switch off the phase. We can see at zero dBs we have our maximum bandwidth here. And as I said, the data sheet gives us this just before the big drop. So it doesn't give us a minus 3 dB point up here, which is almost a megahertz, but rather here at 600. Okay, and every time that our gain increases by 10, our bandwidth decreases by 10. So, our maximum gain here has a very small bandwidth. So, it's this amplifier right here. Okay, so a gain of 1000, very small bandwidth. Now let's break it up. Take it through this amplifier at 20 dBs. We will have a large bandwidth. Take it to 40 dBs. We will still have a large bandwidth, higher gain. The bandwidth decreased a, a little bit. And lastly, at 60 dBs, our bandwidth is still roughly the same. So instead of having a very small bandwidth and a large gain, we can have a larger bandwidth and a high gain. So if you've ever seen in the schematic somewhere that the amplifier has been broken up like this and you thought by yourself, oh, that is really stupid. Why didn't they just use one op amp? It is because they want to hold a large bandwidth so let's go and have a look at the AD744 so I have a similar setup for the AD744 let's go ahead and run the simulation and here we go switch off of the phase here we can see that we have a much higher bandwidth at 13 megahertz and again every time we increase the decrease in bandwidth is the same okay so if you get a, an amplifier of a higher bandwidth here you can even increase the bandwidth more if you just split up into the different
outputs. So here we almost maintain a bandwidth higher than one megahertz, or well, almost, while increasing the gain every time. Okay, so you can even increase the gain more if you have more amplifiers with less gain each. And that is it for the gain bandwidth product. So always keep this in mind when designing the frequency that you're building for so that it's within the bandwidth of your amplifier. So if you design too high gain and say your signal is here at at 11 megahertz, it's going to start acting like a low pass filter and you're not going to have any outputs at the output of your amplifier or it's going to be very small and you're going to wonder why. Always consider the gain bandwidth product of your amplifier. Is it within your amplifier's bandwidth? And is the gain going to affect your bandwidth enough so that it causes problems? Okay, thank you for watching.